the kitty kisses. There you show show. Oh, I love your kisses. You know, biting, but kisses are cute. Mm. Oh, yeah, I love your kisses, sweet girl. I don't even care if we come back again. And as long as the sun. Hello everyone and welcome back to the Heavenly Homestead. My name is Letty and today I'm gonna show you around, catch you up of what's been happening and share with you some of the stuff that developed while I was away. Good morning. Hi Tara. Hi. Okay, let me tell you what's going on with Athene who is going over there and I'm checking but because that was part of the problem. So it all started on Sunday. I came to feed and when I checked on the little kids, Athene was kind of hunched back. Uh, Athene is our little troublemaker. She is um, the <laughs> most rebellious goat we've ever had. And because of that, I always come and get her in the morning and she's always jumping around and being feisty and fighting over food. And that day on Sunday, she was eating, but she wasn't herself. She was kind of, um, she had this starey, glassy eye look and I just didn't know what was happening. So I check her belly. <laughs> You're such a little girl. You're such a terrible little girl. Mm. So anyways, I noticed that she was kind of uh, with a glassy stare. She was not active and she wasn't as spunky as she usually is in the morning. And that's why, to me, it's very important to keep at least one routine to myself. Like, I can give my morning routine to one of the kids if I need to, to go somewhere. But it's, for me, really important to have this routine, not only for milking, uh, which I will be sharing in another video, but also it's very important because you know what they do when they wake up every morning and they're ready to go outside. If somebody is staying off the feed, if somebody has a poopy butt, if somebody... It's just not active. That's the only way that it is easier to spot when something is wrong with one of your goats. So for me, it's, you know, keeping the morning routine to myself. It helps me keep an eye on them. And if I notice something, I do have a little binder where I write down things, you know, the date and what I notice. And that way I can have a record and if any of them develop any kind of sickness, I kind of see a pattern and it's easier not only to explain in case you have to take it to a vet, but it's also easier for me to figure out what could be wrong, what could I give them, and that kind of thing. So when I checked her, she had a lot of poop stuck to her butt and it wasn't the same kind of berry droppings. It was more liquid and it was to the point that it was stuck to her legs. Now. I checked her the day before, I checked on them before the kids put them in for the night and she didn't have anything the night before. So I really did not know what's going on and as soon as you see diarrhea in a goat it's kind of easy to assume the worst but I washed her butt, I made sure that nothing was sticking to it, I washed her legs and she hated it because I did it with cold water outside and a little bit of Dawn soap. But um, after that, I dried, I dried her very well and I kept an eye on her for the rest of the Sunday. She was still a little starey, you know, she was really like sitting here at the door looking at the sky or the birds or the trees and she wasn't playing with the rest of the kids as she usually does. At night, I started to see a little bit of improvement. However, I took her off any kind of grain I always give them a little bit of grain. I'm saying a handful for the four kids of grain in the morning. And I took her off the grain just to make sure that, you know, she was going to be kept on hay, clean water and minerals. The next day she started to look a little bit better, but I still continue with that. Just 
the alfalfa pellets in the morning and at night and hay throughout the day. That was what it was recommended to me when I had this problem before, so I thought that was going to be my first plan of action. However, I kept coming back to check on her, you know, early in the morning, late at night, a few times if I was doing things around, and just wanted to make sure that she still, you know, kept her butt clean, that she was not having diarrhea. I thought you were kidding. Jealous. Miss Jealous got here. Oh my goodness. You're just fogging the camera, Gaia. It's okay. You're my sweet girl, too. <gasps> Look, go fight with Mr. White. He wants to take your rights away. Doesn't he? Your brother is a little fighter. Why do you say Mr. Black? Now today is Tuesday, so it's only been three days since I noticed this and I continue to keep an eye on her. She continues to have her butt clean, I don't see any signs of diarrhea and I don't see any signs of, you know, any other signs. And if you own goats or if you know anything about goats, usually when they go down, they go down pretty fast. So what i think happened and again this is third day it, she could still you know feel sick and uh, you know not not showing that much at this point but she seems better so this is what i think happened i noticed the diarrhea on sunday but on saturday i've noticed that she was eating minerals now I didn't see it at the time, but when I went to refill the minerals, I've noticed that they were wet. 
Now, it was raining and that mineral feeder um, could have gotten wet by the beards of the goats, you know, when they are eating it or maybe just some water or something, but I just knew that they kind of clumped into a little ball or it could have been just humidity, but it looked more wet than anything. Now, it's high enough that they can't pee on it. It's it's impossible because of you know many trial and errors that I had with that mineral feeder I think this time it's in the right height and it's the, it's the perfect stop, spot for it but I think that what happened is that she ate those minerals wet and maybe didn't go well now my goats typically and I'm talking about adult goats if the minerals are wet they don't touch them so I don't have to worry about it I don't think it's bad for them, but it maybe kind of messes up their rumen. I'm not sure what the deal is, but that was the one thing I noticed the day before she had um, that little poopy butt. So it could have been that. It could be something different. I check um, her lid to for matcha score. I think that's what it's called. And she seems perfectly okay on that. I de-warmed. Uh, everyone with uh, ivermectin which is not the only kind of uh, dewormer that you can use maybe it's a different kind of warm that's why I decided to check she seems fine but yeah it's just one of those things that uh, it keeps you on your toes you're okay Oh my gosh. Mythic cow, you can't be on top of your CC. No girls, this is not lap time for you. No, Mr. Cow. It's a teen's time. Okay. No, no, we don't fight with sisters. What are we talking about over here? Are we fighting with little sisters? No way. Remember, you were born first, so you're the the oldest. You have to protect your CC, okay? No, no, we're not doing that to her. We're not doing that. Oh my gosh. Look, he won the spot. You're such a butt. Just fighting to get a spot here. Oh, Athene, don't give me that face, girlfriend. And I can't stress this enough for people that want to get goats. If you don't have the time to put into, you know, morning chores or evening chores, if you're trying to make everything automated or, you know, which is something that I was watching a video on the other day and I thought it was kind of ridiculous because it would never work with me and my herd. You know, maybe for other people it does, but for me, I think that the only way that you can keep an eye on your goats and make sure that they're happy, that they're healthy, and that they're not lacking or having an abundance of something that can be harmful is just keeping an eye on them. And you keep an eye on them by being with them. And if you can, just spend time throughout the day because you're at work, you have things to do, which makes total sense. I think the one advice I can give you is pay attention while you are with them, you know, while you're doing your morning chores or your evening chores. And that way it's easier to spot really terrible things that could happen, like terrible illness that your goat can get and just go down very, very quickly. I think I mentioned this in another video. I am the kind of person that likes to be ready for different things and I joined this group, a goat group, where it talks about uh, different people having their goats sick. And basically they're asking for advice from the Facebook group, which are a few uh, administrators of the group that are vet techs or they're vets or they work in a vet environment or whatever. And there's a bunch of resources there that you can do for yourself in case you don't have an access to a vet. It happened in the middle of the night. It's a Sunday and everything is closed. You know, it's that kind of emergency. And I've seen people that 
sadly find their goats a little bit too late and you know some people say it was fine 10 minutes ago and now it's dead uh, yeah it can totally happen but I also think that is um, it has a lot more to do with kind of seeing the signs with the kind of illness that can be progressive I don't think it's for every kind of illness but for the ones that are a little bit more slow progressing like a couple of days I think it's the best way to Oh, you wanna snuggle with Shishi?